Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Duke Silver and today we are playing Celestial Tiger. And then before we get into it, I just want to give a periodic reminder that we are making our way to 500 subscribers and once we get there, I will be doing a giveaway for two 700 gem codes. So uh so keep an eye out for that. And uh and yeah. Uh we're we're getting there slowly but surely, but uh but yeah. Just wanted to make sure everyone is aware. Uh but anyways, let's get into this game. So we get a really good start here. Start with a, a bossy, and then we get a get a wizard's familiar that we can get a couple stats on. This shop was really, really good for us. Getting a Cinderella with uh, with a treasure hero is obviously up very, very good, as I've said before. So getting that early with the roll the dice in the shop, so we can cast that instead of just buying a random uh, character, is uh, is great. And it landing on Polywoggle is especially great. Um, this is kind of a weird shop. I think we're gonna take the ogre princess and the uh the sure shot here um positioning gets a little bit weird because we got a few things uh that want to attack first we've only got one uh one slot one and one slot five for for that uh also i kind of wanted to cast the spell so and with the bossy there is there's there is an argument for taking white and just casting the spell and rolling for uh for potential other dwarves but uh but i think i like this line a little bit better uses our gold more efficiently even though we don't get progress on our cindy i think it's uh I think it's still the right way to go here. Uh, unfortunately, we run into a very, very large golden egg, which uh, eliminates our whole board. And uh, we're actually fortunate our poly didn't slay theirs because we get to triple it this turn. Um, now, th these all three of these treasures are pretty defensible to take here. I think it's going to be skip skipping stone. Since we have the Cindy, we've got the pair of familiars in the shop or familiar pair in the shop. Um, I do like monster manual a lot, especially since we have uh, ogre princess getting that four attack a turn with celestial tiger's ability is is uh, a huge huge uh scaling for uh for it for her and it allows her to just uh, keep getting slays throughout the game which is uh which is great it's a great econ um but yeah so we're gonna sell the bossy we're gonna buy the familiar pair and cast a spell here getting our our cindy one step closer to our quest all right unfortunately we don't get any value from our uh from our uh, ogre princess but we do get our poly slay and uh attacks go well enough that we manage to trade and don't lose any more health and yeah we've got a golden uh golden hippocampus on 3.2 here which is fantastic so we're just gonna buy this uh princess p sorry princess peep uh we can't support it we're not gonna be able to put any stats on the tokens but we're just gonna kind of hope that the scaling from the uh the animal summons is gonna be able to uh to get our hippocampus big enough to carry us through a fight. Um, but unfortunately they have a golden donkey, which means our uh, our tokens are looking less than uh, than ideal in this situation. So yeah, we lose that one pretty bad. We dropped to 23. We're on level or at level four. Um, things are not going great at this point. Uh, we need to, we, do, we definitely need to, to uh, triple some of these pairs up. We've got a couple pairs plus the Cindy. So, uh, so things need to uh, need to improve relatively quickly, but I mean uh, this this hippocampus as it scales up is gonna get uh, is gonna be able to carry fights pro probably very very soon. Getting four health per uh, per animal that we buy is uh, is pretty large. Uh, I'm tempted to take the stag, but at level four it's like a little bit too late. But it does scale, and it's better than what we have on board right now. But ultimately, we decide to roll past it. We get to triple our Ogre Princess, which is fantastic. And we're going to take Crystal Ball here. Um, the Haunted Helm is obviously a ton of stats. But I think uh, since we have... Um, since we have a couple other pairs, uh, there's, there's definitely um, some lines that uh, that lead to uh, to wins with Crystal Ball here. And I feel like Crystal Ball just has, it just has by far the most upside. Uh, like helm helm is very solid, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think crystal ball is the way we want to go Especially since we have the familiar pair already as well All right, we're gonna double we're gonna mix a whistle this uh, this hippocampus It's got a lot of stats on it. So whatever we mix a whistle it into is gonna be very large and then we get a uh, We get a Baba Yaga so we can put that behind our ogre princess Which is gonna be fantastic and because we do that I want to I want to put extra stats onto the the ogre princess uh, we triple our Cindy and we get a Boiling Beaker. So Boiling Beaker and Crystal Ball 
um, on Celestial Tiger is very, very potent, as we're going to see uh, see shortly here. And also we roll and find the Crystal Ball. Or sorry, not the Crystal Ball, the uh, True Love's Kiss. Uh, so we get to we get to mix a kiss, our uh, our hippo, and we end up with a uh, with a golden burn beard. Super early. It's a ton of stats, so that should be able to carry us through some fights. And and it's also a great place for us to put stats with our uh, beaker ball combo here. Also, we only need one more treasure. We've got a pair. We only need one more treasure for our skip skipping stone, which is going to send us right to six starting next turn. And, uh, and then if we can get slays with the Ogre Princess while on level 6, um, we are going to be able to uh, to just start getting free level 6 characters. And uh, and yeah, we tri we get a free, almost a free uh, Juliet triple here. We get one off the Ogre Princess and then two in the shop. So we get to triple into a Forking Rod. So Forking Rod, Ball, Beaker is uh, a really, really strong combination. And also we go to level 6. So... Uh, so yeah, we get to start building uh, building a real board very very quickly here, and we don't get uh, we don't get our forking rod value out of that uh, that spell, but I think it's worth it just to put stats onto our ogre princess. Again, we wanna we wanna get this ogre princess big enough to slay, because as as it starts as it slays, it's gonna just fill our board fill our uh, our bench with level six characters. Well, I mean we're gonna get one one at a time, but uh. But we're gonna we're gonna get free ones anyways, and also we uh, we forked the uh, the four glory there. So as long as we win this fight, and we're very very favored too, um, as long as we win it, we're gonna get two two more level six characters, and we get a pair of Ashwoods out of our four glories plus our our ogre princess. So very very good result there. All right, and we get we're. We don't have any spell cost reduction, which we would we would definitely play an Aeon if we see one, because we can we can make it a relevant size very very quickly. But uh, oh uh, yeah, I think it's still worth it just to keep casting spells onto our characters because, I mean, with the be the beaker alone, each spell is plus four plus four with the forking rod, so everything we put, uh, everything we we target our one of our creatures with is uh, going to be getting plus eight plus eight before the. Uh, before the stats that the spell puts on it, so so that adds up really, really quickly. <clears throat> also, uh, shout out to uh, Matumbo who who has who pointed out correctly that we should just be putting stats onto our onto our Ashwoods because we've got the Golden Burn Beard, and uh, yeah, not not doing so just seems like it's uh, wildly incorrect. Which I definitely was uh during during the stream I was talking about how good how good putting stats on the burn beard is, so uh so appreciate that correction, and also and good call. Um, there's an echo wood there which fits onto our board really well, but we just really really want to cast spells here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be able to triple our ashwood here fortunately, and uh, there's some decent level six treasures here, but the setup that we have with this uh, the ball beaker and fork, um. I, d I don't think I'm going to take any of these level six treasures. I think this combo is just way, way too potent, potent to, uh, to be giving up here. And especially now that the uh, Ashwood's golden, the, uh, the stats that we're going to be, we're going to be putting on it are going to be, um, absolutely absurdly good. So it's a, it's kind of a tough skip, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to skip this level six treasure. And we've got a, an Oni Tyrant and a, uh, a Medusa that we can play. Oni Tyrant is also going to make our Ogre Princess better. We're going to continue getting free level 6 characters. And yeah, you can see already the uh, the Ashwood and Burnbeard combo just are putting an absurd amount of stats onto our board. Uh, we take a uh, we take the triple for the um, storm sign of the storm, but honestly, I don't know if that's actually correct. It's a lot of stats right now, I suppose, but but we spent our whole turn doing that, and I think if we just dug for uh, for targeted spells on this Ashwood, it might end up just being worth more stats. But uh, but yeah, that's what we did that turn, and uh, I mean we're, we're we're very very strong, so we we can take a turn off. But I just think it might might not have been the most uh, efficient thing to do. All right, and here we're gonna since we have the wand now, we can we can double cast this uh, this evil twin. But I make a pretty big mistake here. I should have sold the uh, the Herc here, because I want to get uh, two more Burn Beards for our giant Ashwood to uh, to pump up. 
but um, because Crystal Ball uh, gives you two spells in shop with uh, with Tiger, and it does it before the second one goes off, um, we run out of sh shop space and hand space, so we only get one of the Burn Beards, unfortunately. But we do get another uh, Evil Twin in the shop, which we are going to lock. And, that, and then next turn, we'll get another Golden Burn Beard out of this Evil Twin. We're going to make some hand space, though. We're going to sell some stuff and, and cast whatever targeted spells come up on the left there onto our Ashwood. There's some more. We're not too concerned about Wizards Familiar anymore, so... That's that's just not how, how we're going to win the game. These, uh, these trees are going to... Are going to be what carries us. And that's a pretty pretty large uh, Empress P board, but uh, but our trees are just way way too tanky for them. Now that we have hand space, we can we can double this uh, this burn beard and get another level six treasure. Again, there's n these none of these level six treasures really uh, really come close to the power that we're going to get out of uh, out of what we have here. Consider sharding the. Uh, the green knight here which might have been correct but I mean there's definitely some misses there's two out of five um, evil characters on six that we'd be happy to hit but uh, we also could have sharded the ogre princess which we probably should have we just didn't really consider it I was considering just uh just buying the forbidden fruit but I feel like like we're at 23 we're not we're not exactly well like we're not we're not uh, weak and like we're not necessarily in danger of dying, but I figured just in case, um, taking four damage is probably just not worth it when we can sell what we have. But also banking banking gold is uh, is probably very good, but uh, but it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we're down to a top two situation now, and we saw how big how how big the uh, the pup was last time, and uh, we didn't really have trouble handling them before. So again, we're just going to put all these stats into this Ashwood. Just going to make it as large as possible. Uh, I could put the worm, worm Root onto the Medusa here, but I don't think that matters at all. Uh, we can mix a Wizzle this Medusa, though. And it's a Lordy, which uh, I guess is fair. It's, it's probably not going to matter at all, but... Uh, and then we lock, we lock the Magic Research in the shop, just in case. And yeah, the uh, Empress P board has gotten bigger, but uh, but we have also gotten much bigger. And yeah, they fail to take down any of our trees in the front line, and uh, and yeah, we take down the win with uh, with Wand Ball Beaker on Celestial Tiger here. Uh, so yeah, like the amount of stats that we get from those targeted spells is, uh, as you can see, absolutely absurd. I mean, going to level six from with the uh, skip skipping stone, of course, is uh, is a huge reason for for our win there as well, but. I think, yeah, T Tiger with Beaker by itself is just so, so many stats. And yeah, we didn't need any spell cost reduction whatsoever, and we still just dominated the game with uh, with our targeted spells. So, so I think that's a, that's a pretty good uh, pretty good indication of how strong that that is on Celestial Tiger. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, if you found this interesting or educational or entertaining in any way uh please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already it really helps the channel and i really appreciate it um yeah um l let me know what you thought let me know if you think if you would have made any other decisions uh, in the comments um again i respond to every comment and uh and i love hearing from you guys and uh and if you want to catch these games live you can follow me over on twitch my twitch will be in the description and in the pinned comment so uh so i'd love to love to see you over there um, but yeah, with all that being said, I hope you have a good night, day, morning, whatever time you choose to watch this, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.